All right. So uh, as we transition a little bit today uh, to our first kind of existentialist thinker, we're moving on from that overall heading of thinking about what it means to be human and what it means to exist. All right. And those are our two kind of like signals as it relates to uh, as it relates to existentialism. What does it mean to be human and what does it mean to exist? What does it mean to be doing what it is we're doing? What does it mean to be uh, existing how it is that we are existing, right? And we engaged with, and as I kind of spoke in that last video on Monday, that there are two kind of brands of existentialism. There's the Christian existentialists and then there's the atheist existentialist. And today we're going to begin with our focus on our next thinker named Friedrich Nietzsche. And the way you spell his last name is N-I-E-T-Z-S-C-H-E, -E, Nietzsche. Okay? And Nietzsche is a powerful figure in the history of philosophy. By all measure, uh, he's one of the most enigmatic uh, philosophers that's ever existed. He was born in 1844 and he died in 1900. And in his very short life, he produced works that have still uh, continued to kind of uh, engage and, and, and challenge both philosophers and non-philosophers alike. And a couple of things that we'll see with Nietzsche and a couple of things that we'll engage with regards to kind of what Nietzsche offers us is, is this, this power and this push to become more alive. Okay? And this power and this push for us to become more alive, to become more awake to ourselves, to become more awake to the world within which we live. Because this is going to mirror a little bit of some of like Socrates thinking. But Nietzsche thought that we were all living numb lives. He thought that we kind of fell in line with, with doing what others have told us to do, that we fell in line with, with accepting the status quo that we haven't really questioned or we've just accepted uh, we've just accepted our 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 lot in life and, and that's all that there is when in fact Nietzsche is going to argue that really once we take better possession of ourselves which is this deeply existential exercise right what does it mean to be in possession of yourself that when we take kind of possession of ourself we can and will in fact become more alive we will, in fact, become more aware to the world. We'll become, in fact, more aware to ourselves. And this uh, is undoubtedly a powerful exercise. Nietzsche rattled a lot of feathers, and he still does. He was, uh, he was, he was vehemently um, uh, uh, opposed, and I'm saying it lightly here, to Christianity. Nietzsche thought that Christianity, along with other organized religions, essentially encouraged people to be passive. That any time we have an outlook, whether that be religious or whether that be societal, that just tells us to calm down and accept things how they are, or, as religions often do, uh, you know, your focus should be in an afterlife, not in this life. Anything that takes kind of your focus off kind of your moment at the present for Nietzsche is problematic. And he thought that Christianity did that on a number of levels. And so as we'll dive in, uh, as we'll dive in kind of in the next video, where Nietzsche, how, where and how Nietzsche sees this happen will be something of interest to us. Okay. Uh, Nietzsche also, interestingly, um, there's no real delicate way of saying this, uh, for the last about 11 years of his life, he was spent in a state of insanity. In 1889, he uh, saw a horse being beaten in a street, and he ran over to it and threw his arms around it and essentially collapsed and went insane. And, and so he spent, um, he spent the last 11 years of his life, uh, the last 11 years of his life um, in a state of... Um, uh, insanity and he was being cared for by his sister which is problematic for a couple of historical reasons um, but yeah that's a major facet of Nietzsche's life and even kind of what I was saying a moment ago that Nietzsche was born in 1844 died in 1900 but went insane in 1889 so that is just a short life all things considered uh, quick math 56 minus 11 
45 years of, of life of, of actual kind of like productivity, if that's the right word. And I apologize if that's insensitive. Um, but it's something to take note of that Nietzsche, again, kind of offers us this position and philosophy that, that really is challenging. And, and I continue to still get encouraged and I still continue to get um, um, passionate about what Nietzsche offers us. And so I'll kind of dive more into that into the next video.